So it's a pirate's ring you desire, is it? Hey guys, Mike here at Patriot Coin Rings. Uh, okay, so we got uh, Kevin Parker. Kevin Parker out of uh, Moulton, uh, Alabama. Uh, Kevin, thanks a lot for your order. Uh, Kevin has asked us to make a uh, pieces of eight coin ring. Uh, he wants it silver and finished, size nine. Uh, doesn't want the antique uh, finish on it, so we're going to do that for him. I thought I'd go ahead and record this so you can see how that's done. If you've never seen this coin before, that is a bomb-ass coin. Uh, you have all the full details. That's going to be the side that's going to go on the outside for him. Uh, but the opposite side also makes a really good coin ring if you want, just all straight flames. It makes it a, like a really great biker's ring, uh, just all flames all over it. Like, you can actually uh, put it on, you know, powder coated or something, uh, something with, you know, red, black, and just have, have some tight colors. Had a lot of custom orders for that. But I thought I'd go ahead and record this so that uh, Patrick could see his uh, coin made, or I'm sorry, I said Patrick, uh, Kevin, Kevin Parker could see his coin ring made. And if, for those of you that would like to follow along with us, uh, thank you for visiting. All right, so basically uh, we're going to start off with anyone that's a, a coin ring maker or a, inspiring to be a coin ring maker, you're probably a perfectionist. You really need to be. And you see that you really need to have the very best of tools. And here I've got the Jason Works uh, Gamut. It's called the Whole Gamut. And it is unbelievable. He, this guy has got everything put in place. Uh, the, there's nothing that you wouldn't need. This is a uh, self-centering tool that actually makes my coin perfectly center. And I don't need any spacers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a half-inch punch on this with my six-ton uh, press that I bought from Harbor Freight for only about 100 150 bucks. I think I don't think it was more than 100 bucks. And the silver coin uh, punch is going to pop right through the bottom. It never did that before uh, on Jason's punches. But uh, he's come a long way with some super high-tech uh, engineering on these, on these tools. All right, and hammer it out with your uh, uh, Demerol uh, hammer. And uh, you'll see that I've got a perfect pull. I've got, I'm going to mark it with a permanent black marker. Uh, there's two ways to know when your silver is perfectly hot, is when it turns green and when that black marker disappears. You can see the green flame, you can see the black has disappeared, so let's quench it. Now I'm going to quench it in some Sparex number two, uh, basically one to two tablespoons for two cups of water inside of a uh, slow cooker, and that should do it. And you can see I've got a really nice frosty look on it, there's no burn marks, it, it looks fantastic. Uh, get get it back over to your press and I'm gonna first put it on a doming block uh, now there's multiple types of doming blocks that you could use uh, I got these off of eBay no-name brands for me to throw out there but you can see I've got different sizes available especially for the large commemorative uh, rings uh, I've got the perfect one set here I'm gonna use a still a still ball just initially because uh, that's all I need it's the uh, silver's been softened I've got a real nice cone shape I'm going to move over to a uh, about a 25 degree angled uh, die uh, from Jason Works, and you can see how the cone shape is actually starting to pull out. Now you want it with silver. Definitely keep reannealing it very, very frequently. There's certain metals, nickels uh, also as well, that will split on you if you don't constantly anneal them. And it's just going to make it uh, come out just perfect without any splints or tears or damage to the outside of the mint. Again, I, I can just look at it. I see the green flame. Throw it in the pickle bath. I'm good. All right. Let's move on forward and dry it up so that I don't carry the water over to any of my uh, uh, dyes and make sure that it's set perfect. Now, I'm putting inside of the die without, without any uh, Teflon tape initially because it's only touching the very, very top rim. And I'm going to go ahead and use this mandrel to uh, stretch it out and get it beyond the size that I want. Now our goal size is size 8, and I'm going to bring this to about a 12, maybe 13. Uh, just check it frequently. You can see I'm on a 13 right there. 
and we're going to put about 20, 25 wraps of Teflon tape around it. And that's when we're going to uh, move over to like a Swedish die, which is only a 17 degree die. And keep going back and forth. Flip it upside down after you get the cone shape inside your ring. You can see how I constantly put it back and forth, upside down. And as needed, if you see that you need more Teflon, keep adding more Teflon. I've cut out a lot of this just to make this film shorter than normal. But I assure you that I've put Teflon on there several times. Now this is called the unwanted S-curve to the side. You can notice the uh, S-curve uh, where it's high at top and beveled at the bottom. And a lot of guys have problems with this. So I'm going to show you how to fix this. I nail it up once, once again. You're going to pickle it. And this is what I call a poor man's ring stretcher. You'll find it for about $10 on Amazon. Take a quick side note, guys, that I will only recommend the one uh, poor man's mandrel with the uh, nylon demerol base. Do not buy the one with wood, otherwise it'll break in the first or second use. $10 on eBay. And it's meant for people that can't afford the two or $300 uh, ring stretchers. Use a sledgehammer or something, they'll just have a little force to it. And because it has a stepping pattern, it'll actually pull out the lower section and not the upper section. If I take it off the uh, poor man now, you can actually see how straight that's come out. All right, so now that I know that I've got a very nice straight wall to it, now's the time that we're going to go ahead and start working on milling the sides so that it has a nice uniform look and looks like a real ring. But we got to concentrate on safety first. Make sure that you take care of your ears, your eyes, and your lungs, your respiratory system, so that you don't have any problems. I really did go to the hospital for a few days because I had so many metal shavings in my lungs, and that is no joke. Uh, but you know what? I, I get it. It's funny. I can already see the comments below. It's almost looking like I'm gearing up to uh, fly a jet or something, <laughs> but hey, you know what? You come first, right? Watch the birdie. Jeez, I cracked myself up. Everybody has their own preference, but I always start off with 100 grit sandpaper, and I also use a 3M because a 3M comes on a, uh, almost like a rubber sheet that allows me to uh, mold it uh, to a nice round uh, shape on the sides that I want. And you can actually see just how nicely this works, and you, here's, the, here's the shavings that I'm talking about. When you're doing it in person and it's not close up, you can't even really see those. Uh, but you, you can imagine uh, two, three months of inhaling that. And you can see why I'm telling you to protect your respiratory system. Okay, uh, so so you work your way up. Once you start off with 100 grit, you get the shape that you want. You're going to move up to 600 grit. And then after your 600 grit, you're going to move up to 2,000 as far as 3,000 grit, which is called mirror uh, sanding. And it's going to look just like that, like a mirror. Also, be sure to watch that you don't touch that ring right away. As you can see, it's really, really hot. Um, have, have some water standing by so you cool that baby down and uh, you'll be able to handle it. Now, flipping the coin over, I can start working the inside. And I'm working with some quadruple watt fine steel wool. Um, this will actually make it smooth. It will not scratch it. And I use it for the top read uh, to get that really nice, you know, where the dies have made little scratches on it. Now, when I'm doing the detail on the ring itself, I'm actually barely, just barely, barely touching it. I don't want to lose any of that detail, but the reed itself, uh, right on the end, is the only one that I'm actually putting pressure on. With that, you're going to see just how much detail pops out, and you can see the, how clean it is on the up, upsides of the surface compared to below it. So uh, that's kind of like if we were to antique this, for instance, that's where we need to see the antiquing is the lower surface. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out, give it a little bit better shape. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's pretty close to being finished. That's, I'm going to go ahead and just cone it in just so I can straighten it up a little bit. And we're going to use, I, I like, if you notice the... Uh, 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 I always forget the name of it. It's not Dremel, but it's uh, uh, Demerol, Demerol, Demerol uh, push rods, the uh, plastic, white plastic ones. Those are my favorites. I like using those more than anything else. It doesn't scratch the insides of my dies. Uh, they bend down uh, a little bit similar to the push rods, uh, you know, like uh, uh, 
Legacy has and also uh, J uh, Jason Works has. You know, Jason Works now it has those really killer um, Ross push rods. Uh, you know what? I Those are the best by far. Definitely see uh, uh, Jason about that. Uh, okay, so anyways, uh, now, now what you want to do is constantly give it an inspection, look for any more uh, scratches or anything that you could remove, anything that you could possibly make better than it already is. Once you're really happy with the shape and the way it's come out, it's time to go ahead and put a nice clear coat on it. And because this customer wanted straight silver and no antique patina, uh, this is exactly how he's going to get it with the straight silver, the natural silver. I'm going to dip this one in uh, Protect Clear. And uh, after you give it a good soaking, go ahead and just hang it up on a nail or something that's on the side of your wall at an angle so that it actually runs off the sides, all that extra drip, so it doesn't stay thick onto the sides. Hit periodically, and that's it. You're, you're done with your ring. I mean, that's, that's it, guys. You just got through making a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, pirate pieces of eight. Kevin, that's it, buddy. Your ring's all finished up, and it'll be dried uh, with the jeweler's uh, clear coat by morning. I'll have it shipped to you first thing in the morning. Thanks a lot for watching, and everyone else who's watching, I really, really appreciate it. If you guys didn't already know it, uh, all the proceeds that are uh, sold on, um, uh, through me on Etsy go to the Wounded Warriors Project. So I really, really appreciate all the attention I'm getting and everything that you guys are doing. To, uh, support that thank you kevin your your pro proceeds went went to those guys to help them out there's a lot of, a lot of treatment that these guys don't get you know after they get out of war um prosthetics are very expensive and uh, getting the medical treatment that they need other than the va hospital there's extended med medical uh getting rehab that's needed uh, uh revocational training so that they can enter the civilian workforce again it's, it's something that I feel is a worthy project and charity to, to help out. And because of guys like you, uh, we're able to do that and contribute. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you guys like what's going on here, if you, if you guys uh, support our vets, if you guys support our troops going overseas, regardless of the situation, that you, whether we like war or we don't like war, I don't like war, but... You know, I served because I was told to, and, and uh, if that's what it takes to keep us free and, and to be able to keep my family safe, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so be a patriot, like the page down below, subscribe if you support your, uh, support your bets, uh, and I really appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully you go on and watch other videos too because i got some amazing ones out there, and there's also giveaways that I'm constantly, constantly throwing out there. So. Hopefully you'll be the next winner. You guys, thanks a lot. You guys take care. Peace out.